this is what we signed up for, even pre-COVID. Uh, we know there are dangers in the emergency department. We know that there's risk, but we, we signed up for that risk. This is definitely a once in a generation, definitely once, once a century event um, that no one was really prepared for. I think of myself as a very independent and self-sufficient person, but with this pandemic, that was not gonna happen. to start getting dressed. This is the N95. And over the N95, we have to put another mask. I have a hat that I can wear as well. A cap, and then I usually put a cap over that. A lot of things going on. I remember the date. It was Sunday, March 22nd. Uh, and I that day I wasn't working. And it was kind of a cold day that day. And I was in the house and I was feeling a little cold, but my husband never really turns the heat up very high. So I thought it was the heat. I was like, oh man, Al, he didn't turn on the heat. So, and the heat was down. So I was like, oh, it was the heat. So I turned it up, I went to bed. And then all night long, I was having weird dreams and chills. And I woke up the next morning, I was like, I turned the heat up. So it was definitely not the heat. So I measured my temperature and it was 100.4. And normally that's something I would, just not think much of. And I was like, hopefully that's not anything. I just took some Tylenol and I was like, knew in my heart that it probably was something, but I, I went to work. Everybody was wearing masks at that time. As the day progressed, I kept on having these fevers and chills, very low grade. And I was like, okay, at this point, this is not something I could ignore. I actually put myself through the tent to get tested. My coworker tested me. And the next morning on Tuesday, uh, they got the results back to me and it came back positive. If I sit there and think about it too much, it's, it's not going to help me. It's not going to help anybody. It's not going to help my family. It's not going to help my patients. So uh, I was quarantined, but I did a, a lot of, it was a lot of work from home, actually, from, from afar, uh, constant meetings, constant calling the emergency department, because every day there was something new that was going on. My parents were, were born in Korea. They immigrated here and they're sort of the, I think the traditional, very overprotective Korean parents. When COVID happened, they were immensely worried about me going to the emergency department. And my mom would call me up every day and be like, you're wearing, you're wearing protection, right? You're wearing a hat and, and, and face mask and everything. I'm like, of course I am. Yes, yes. So then when I did get COVID, I did not tell them initially. And <laughs> because I didn't want them to worry because, she, you know, especially my mother, she would have worried immensely. But she must have the sixth sense because I was at home and I didn't say anything to her at all. And every day she'd be like, did you go to work today? I'm like, yes, of course I did. <laughs> you know, after I knew I was okay and I was back to work, I essentially told them, yeah. And my mom's like, I knew, <laughs> I knew something was up. <laughs> hey everyone, it is 7 a.m. in the morning. Um, this is a pretty late start for me, actually. When I'm in the ED, I usually have to wake up around 5 or 6 a.m. just to get ready. Um, as you can tell, I am not a morning person. Um, usually don't eat breakfast just so I can get the extra minutes of sleep in. But um, one thing I can't live without is my coffee. So I I'm an intern, so I started residency around like last July, I would say. Um, and things started really picking up around early March here in New York. The things I've seen at Elmhurst are, are probably images that I'll, I'll never forget ever. Um, it's like, they're conditions that, especially in the thick of things, um, that you hope to never see again, ever. 
you know, we have a side of the ED that's primarily dedicated just to COVID-like symptoms. And there was a time when the number of patients on that side was astronomical. And, you know, I walked into shift and it was pretty busy. And, you know, in that classic EM doctor mentality, you know, me and my team were like, let's go, like we got this. And, you know, we worked our butts off all shift nonstop. And it was like, you know, treading in quicksand. It was just like the more patients we saw, the more patients would be brought back into that, to the ED. And this was before the tent uh, in front of our hospital went up. Everyone in that room was hypoxic. Their oxygen levels were not compatible with life and needed supplementary oxygen via mask or like a nasal cannula. Everyone was sick in that whole room. Just, I remember seeing like multiple patients in, in a room together, you know, oxygen tanks were being, being brought in and out, running out before, uh, faster than we can replete them. Um, and that was, that was a scary scene to see. And, you know, thankfully we managed that shift pretty well, but, you know, it, it wasn't a sustainable way to, you know, help the community that we care so deeply about. You know, I usually don't take breaks during my shifts, but that day I had to just, you know, take my PPE off and just sit down and just kind of digest what, what I'm seeing. Um, that day stands out in particular. So getting ready to go to work this morning. So I have my mask station here. So I'm gonna put that on and then contaminated jackets here from work. And then have my shoe station here, which I will now put outside. So I open the door first so I can put the shoes on out there. Before we hit the peak and before I, I went into the hospitals for two weeks to volunteer, when I was still trying to do outpatient care at that point, by then we had removed everything. We had moved all of our appointments remotely. Um, and so at that point, there was a time when just trying to manage all the patient volume that was coming in, um, I think I felt very scared. and sad at that point, but when you have that much work to do and you know you have so many people you need to get back to and respond to, at least for me, I just went into like compartmentalizing mode. So I just put my head down and took care of as many patients as I could. Um, so I know I was scared and I was, I wouldn't say I was like personally depressed, but it was a very sad, depressing situation. Um, so most of the time, like I didn't, I was not aware of that, but it was just when it, all the emotions and feelings I think were just under the surface. So those feelings would very easily um, be triggered, I would say. So for instance, just a kind word, because at, at one point um, when I was out and I was wearing scrubs, maybe I was going to or from a clinic or something like that like a stranger just saying thank you, I would just start to well up. Or the times I would come home from a long shift at the hospital, the when I would hear the clapping in my neighborhood, I would just, I would really well up. It was so uplifting to know that in every day, even in the like darkest times, like there were moments of light. I can't name a single colleague that shied away from the responsibility that we had. Um, 
um, everyone was ready to go to work. I'm excited to go into work a lot of every day just, just to see the people that I work with and everything that they've been through and how strong they were and they really were heroes. 